Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's and Mariana's Coffee. Tonight on the Channel 2 News. A suspect was arrested on charges relating to domestic violence. Also tonight, an update on the Mariana's Got Talent singing competition. And the story of how a Marshallese Masonic Lodge ended up at Saipan. In sports, the Federals faced off against the CUC in Game 12 of the 2023 R&J Wine and Liquor Intergovernment Business League Tournament. Stay with us. These stories and more are next. This burger looked at one slice of melted cheese and said, more cheese. It looked at pickles and said, also onions. It wanted to be more than hot. It wanted to be juicy. This is the Quarter Pounder with cheese. If you thought one napkin for the Quarter Pounder with cheese was enough, it's not enough. A domestic violence incident was reported last Sunday and a suspect has been arrested. Officers say that when they arrived on the scene in Cobblerville, they observed the victim to have visible injuries on her face and body. The victim told officers that during an argument with her boyfriend, 35-year-old Jefferson A. Hebron, she was punched in the head and kicked several times on her body. The victim then reportedly fled to a neighbor's residence and called 911, and when she returned to her room, she discovered her passport, clothes, and cell phone were broken. Hebron was arrested for assault and battery, vandalism, and disturbing the peace, domestic violence. CNMI Superior Court Judge Kenneth Govindo signed an arrest warrant with bail set in the amount of The Multipurpose Center hosted Mariana's Performing Arts Competition Corporation, also known as IMPACT's first elimination round in the Mariana's Got Talent singing competition. Following two auditions, the singers came back to compete with high stakes rewards, a cash prize, and a chance to represent the CNMI on America's Got Talent next summer. This hurt that I've been through, I'm missing you, I'm missing you like Channel 2 caught up with Brent, who was the second person who took the stage. He sang the song Lay Me Down by Sam Smith. Here's what he had to say about performing. Once I stepped on stage, I just got into singing mode. I 
I didn't think about anything else but my song, but singing my song and trying to feel um, the message of the song. So yeah. what's the what's the hardest part about performing? So I guess the hardest part about performing is trying to make a connection with your audience because you can be a great singer, you can reach all the high notes, reach all the low notes, but if the audience, um, if there's no impact and the audience doesn't even want to listen, then I guess that's where the disconnect happens and we want to make sure that the audience is, we are captivating the audience, we're capturing their attention. The singers who place in the top three will each be given cash prizes. In addition to these prizes, a People's Choice Award was given following the first elimination round. The recipient? Sebastian Tajimai, who played a rendition of Somewhere Over the Rainbow in honor of his mother. I feel really humbled and very grateful for my support team, from my school to my family, to my friends who have continuously supported me to this journey I'm taking. So tell me a little bit about the, the song that you played. It was a tribute for my mom. It was just her death anniversary like 10 days ago. September 13th and so I wanted to sing this song for her because it was one of the only memories I could really recall just hearing this song from her. All 24 contestants made it through the two auditions and into the elimination round where the number of competitors was expected to be thinned down before the second round. However, this was not the case as it was announced that none of the singers were eliminated and that all 24 would be moving on to the second elimination round. Judge Vinnie Orsini explains more. I heard that there was a threshold they wanted to um, cut off people from, and if a contestant went below the, the benchmark, then they were eliminated. Uh, surprisingly or unsurprisingly to nobody, everyone went above and beyond the, the benchmark. And so because they agreed on something before it started, it's only fair to follow it through to the end. And uh, you know, we're judges, we're just there to do our job to give points and, and follow the rubrics as well as we can. But ultimately the board will decide what they choose to do uh, with the, the judges scores. And so I'm thinking that um, all these people are just getting better and better. All of these contestants are just more amazing. People have cried today, people have been in shock or, or you know in just pure rapture I guess I think I I love this uh, vibe I want to see it keep going the second elimination round will be held on October 21st Save big on mobile and home internet with Link. Get a mobile plan with 40 gigabytes of LTE data and 30 Mbps down on home internet for as low as $95 a month. Better yet, bundle your services with any iPhone 14 series and receive a $50 credit, a SuperPod AX, and basic installation completely free. We'll also cover your first two months of home internet service for savings of over $500. Offer valid for a limited time, so Link, bundle, and save today. Tokomo Pacific, better together. Get your goods here with care and attention with Micronesia Air Cargo Services. Max is all about connections, daily flights to and from Guam, four times a week to Rota, and bi-weekly flights to Tinian. We are connecting the Marianas. Perishable goods, Home Depot furniture and appliances, even live animals operating since 2013. Check out our Thursday special to Rota from Guam and Saipan. Call Max at 670-288-6227. If it fits, we'll take it. Green sea turtles and hawksbill turtles call the Mariana Islands home. They're an important part of the marine ecosystem. They are under threat and they are protected under CNMI law. Keep plastic out of the ocean. Keep vehicles off the beach. Use the sea turtle stranding hotline if you see poaching activities or if you see a turtle in trouble. 
Call 287-8537 and save a turtle. Officially founded in the 60s, Iman Masonic Lodge number 179 has a rich history that spans all across the Pacific. The history of Iman Masonic Lodge goes all the way back to an early 40s military base on the small Marshall Island of Kwajalein. A Square and Compass Club was formed by the soldiers on base who were Masons. A Square and Compass Club is an informal Masonic social group usually formed when a lodge can't officially be established. In Kwajalein, uh, during the 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 missile testing uh, era. They, there were a lot of uh, personnel there, civilian and military personnel, uh, watching uh, all this. They're, they're perfecting the missile, missile uh, system. And um, they formed a square and compass club. And then uh, they, didn't, they then decided to call this form a lodge. But before forming a lodge, you have to petition a grand lodge. A grand lodge should, it should be the one who will grant you a, a charter. All of the Masons were U.S. military servicemen, meaning they weren't in Kwajalein long enough to have a lodge chartered. And without an official grand lodge charter, they couldn't conduct any lodge business or initiate new members. It took 20 years for the lodge to finally have an official charter. After their request was denied by the Grand Lodge of California, they were passed on to the Grand Lodge of the Philippines. In 1966, the charter was issued and Iman Masonic Lodge was born. The lodge thrived after that, its membership peaking in 1985 with 263 Masons. Unfortunately for the lodge, though, membership deteriorated when the Cold War ended and the Masons stationed there began to leave. When they perfected the missile testing uh, systems, the military, per, military and civilian personnel were transitioned. They're all transitioned there. They're not, they're not permanent there also. So they go, well, go back home to their uh, places of origin, in, most probably in the United States. Every state. So their membership dwindled. They could no longer meet. The lodge surrendered its charter in 1991 when it no longer had enough members to hold a meeting. After this, the Masons in Guam started working to re-establish Amon Lodge in Saipan. Previously, there was a lodge established in Saipan called Micronesia Lodge, but the charter was moved to Guam due to inactivity. The hope was that Amon Lodge could replace the previous lodge. I think brethren from Guam who are from Micronesia Lodge, number 173, which was called this, uh, originated here in Saipan, they felt that uh, they got some some call this uh, gratitude to introduce uh, masonry in Saipan. And they learn about that Iman Lodge has surrendered their charter. They, uh, they asked the Grand Lodge of the Philippines to bring, that they would bring the, char the charter of Iman Lodge over here in Saipan, transfer. And they will be the one to initiate and start uh, masonry in Northern Mariana Islands. In order to build membership enough to keep the lodge active by itself, the Masons from Guam had to fly to Saipan every month for their stated meetings for six years. Finally, in 1997, the lodge was able to elect their first Saipan resident worshipful master, Wilfredo Ching. That's what they do there. They have the, the from, from Guam, they, have, they spend like five years here to strengthen the lads, to the, those people from Micronesia. Not only Micronesia, the other lads just also in Guam. The worshipful master was from Guam, senior warden, junior warden. So they went up to the stairs, the senior deacon and the junior deacon went up also. The, so, they, so all in all, five years. So on the sixth year, I was, there. <laughs> I was elected. The lodge continues to thrive today and is still active in the community. Recently, they raised money for the victims of the fires in Maui. In addition to this, the Lodge participated in the International Coastal Cleanup earlier this month. This is Wendell Mary Posadas, the current Worshipful Master of Iman Lodge. We Mason have duties. We have duties we owe to God, to your country, to your neighbor, and to yourself. That's our duty. That's the duty of Freemasonry, from the highest to the lowest. For KSPN2 News, this is Trey Youngdo reporting. Fallen. 
In our exclusive Mountains 12 series, the Saipan boys are nearing the end of their bikepacking trip, and they start to reflect on life and friendships. We climb up to the Devil's Backbone, and it's well worth the effort. Just spectacular up here, as long as you aren't afraid of heights. Pete does some push-ups, and Blaine goes for the cover shot. Don't try this at home, people. And Russ takes a seat in the spectacular amphitheater. It's been a bit of a range of emotions, you know, from just feeling so grateful to uh, be in the, you know, after the journey of, that I've gone through over the last two years, to be able to do uh, something like this with 12 of my best friends and to be able to share uh, na nature like this. And uh, it's just been, yeah, one of those things just all positive. I feel like, um, you know, uh, all arrows are green and pointing up for me. I'm happy about life. And uh, yeah, just you just become very reflective about uh, everything. The next day, it's mostly downhill into Escalante, 190 miles of memories. Here we go. Guys, good job, guys, with our luggage out and everything. Yeah. And showered, probably. Chris, good job, buddy. Nice job, Karen. Just an amazing experience. We've uh, 12 of us got out there, 12 of us have returned, and uh, it's been six great days of just fantastic trails, experiences, uh, a, lot of, a lot of fun, a lot of bonding. And I'd just like to thank Russ, uh, the very best for, uh, or the best for looking after the whole group, organizing it. And uh, I wish him the very best as well with his health. I think all of us share together and enjoy Russ's company. He's a really funny guy. He makes us all laugh. And I think as you get older, um, it's really important to remember, just enjoy life um, and have fun. And Russ has got that in spades. What a great trip, great scenery, everything worked, no major accidents, no major bike problems. I think everybody stayed together well, had a great time. You know, it was just like, for me, I've been looking forward to this trip for two years. Russ has been a friend for 20 years and he embraced me and my family when I first moved to Saipan and it's been like that ever since. Every time you're with him, you just feel included and you know, that's the whole thing. So nice to see him. Nate, Peter Sinclair, he's straightening my spine every time he gives us a hug. <laughs> Just fantastic people that we haven't seen in a while. It's so good to be here. So, you know, when are we doing it again next year? Coming up, the final episode of Mountains 12, as a ride for Russ, with Russ, and behind Russ, crosses the finish line in a September to remember. Premium office space is available now at the Hermosa Vista Business Park on Capitol Hill. Features include dedicated parking, fast internet, backup power, good water, and natural light throughout to go along with the very best views on Saipan. So don't settle for space when you can get peace and peace of mind. Call Hermosa Vista today at 670-483-4750 or email hvsaipan at gmail.com. Hi, I'm Dre, one of the personal trainers here at Ghost Gym, and today we're going to go over the kettlebell deadlift. Fantastic exercise to build overall strength, particularly in the legs and hips. Remember, we want to make sure that our setup is in good position. If, you're, if, you, if you set up in a bad position, 
is not going to look good and it's certainly not going to feel good. So a common setup, error setup is a, obviously a rounded upper back. Two simple ways of correcting that. All I'm going to have Vince do here is extend his arms up here and all he's going to do is think about reaching long and pushing his hips back. Reach long and push your hips back. So as you can see, he's already in good position. Now he, all he's going to do is grab that kettlebell. He's got tension in his legs and in his back. All he's going to do is just stand up tall, finish with his glutes. Point of sports, sports fans. fans. Last night, the Federals faced off against CUC in Game 12 of the 2023 r Wine and Liquor Intergovernment Business League Tournament. <laughs> CUC started off the first quarter strong, leading with 16 points over the Federals' 12. <laughs> The Federals bounced back in the second corner, managing to secure the lead with 27 points to the CUC's 25. The Federals led for the rest of the game and closed with a winning score of 65 points. Hey, golfers, come north and practice your game at the Marianas Driving Range. New Year's local specials. 10-piece coupon books available for just $60. That's a $10 savings. Want to get really good? Come work on your swing every day for just $99 per month. It's our practice pass, and you're going to love it. Grab your passes and go straight to the range. You can social distance and chip all at the same time, and the views are free. Reserve now at MarianasTrekking.com. You can pay online. Open seven days a week.
One of the best addresses in Saipan has office space available now, right in the heart of things. The Marianas Business Plaza offers reasonable rates and can help build to suit your needs. You'll love the central location, just 15 minutes from the airport and 10 minutes from Garapan. Ample and covered parking keeps your vehicle close and protected. Two restaurants for easy access, lunch, dinner and business meetings. Building security and 24-hour access to your office. Backup generators, so you can run your business in all weather. And three elevators mean easy and convenient access. It's the address in Saipan, the Marianas Business Plaza. Taking a look at our weather, tonight is looking to be cloudy with numerous locally heavy showers and scattered thunderstorms. Southwest winds 10 to 15 miles per hour with lows around 77 and a 70% chance of rain. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy with scattered locally heavy showers and thunderstorms. Southwest winds 10 to 15 miles per hour with highs near 85 and a 50% chance of rain. Tomorrow night, cloudy with numerous locally heavy showers and scattered thunderstorms. Southwest winds 10 to 15 miles per hour with lows around 77 and a 70% chance of showers. High tide will be 2.2 feet at 6 a.m. tomorrow before going down to negative 0.1 feet at 12.39, 6 p.m. tomorrow evening. High tide will be 2.2 feet at 7.21 p.m.